is the Glass Cannon Network. Can you believe that we are only two weeks away? Episode 69. Ooh, nice. <laughs> how do you plan on celebrating Skip? <laughs> yes, how do you all plan on celebrating me? <laughs> I'm curious too. <laughs> yeah, because whenever I think of 69, I think of Skip. The first thing, <laughs> first pop thing to pop. To do. <laughs> Let's throw Skid a party. <laughs> That's gonna uh, be I'm going to break out the the Yamazaki, the n- really nice uh, scotch that I got for Bullman's party uh, like Ooh. two years ago. I'm going to have a glass of that. <laughs> you haven't finished that yet? <laughs> no, I still got like a third of a bottle left. Are you going to oh. drink it upside down? Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Go to town yeah. on that glass. <laughs> Matthew, I know this is your cup of tea. Episode 69, what do you got planned? Uh, I'm going to go to Skid's house. Oh, dear. All right. <laughs> now I know what's happened on the end of that, of that bottle. <laughs> uh, no, I we're excited. a pair of matching glasses. We're excited <laughs> around these parts for episode 69. But you know what I'm really excited about? To record in person. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. How, that would be very nice. How fucking great is this going to be? Because this remote stuff is, uh, it's gotten old. It's really mm-hmm. gotten old. I hate it. I hate it with every fiber of my being. Especially I can scarcely as a remember doing it in person. It's been so long. Pre, pre, I mean, I, 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 we all have lives outside of this. I imagine some of you have played games in person with other people. I have not since androids and aliens. <laughs> no, actually, I guess since, since Giant Slayer, since we finished Giant Slayer. Yeah, I would say, don't you remember an entire <laughs> end year of the of Giant Slayer campaign? episodes of Giant Slayer, yeah. But I mean, beyond that, I, I cannot, I cannot wait to get back in the room because this is, this is very nice, it's very fun, and I enjoy it, uh, but like, get me on the road, get me back in a room together. Uh, this is just like getting the reps in, figuring out the chemistry of this new team, getting Tui up in our business, but I just want to get in the room with you guys and start recording the new show. Same. I mean, by the time this airs, we might... Uh... Did you sign the lease yet? Nah. By the time this airs, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting close. We're getting real close to having a new space that we're really, really excited about. If you guys don't listen to Cannon Fodder, you don't follow what's happening. We are uh, moving into a new space, hopefully very soon, and uh, tricking it out to do some really, really exciting stuff with the uh, with this new uh, adventure path, Gatewalkers, that I have uh, I have almost finished reading. And listen. I'm uh, I'm prone to hyperbole. We've talked Here we about go. it before on the show, especially when I read a new adventure path. I get a little sixty nine, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually. Would you mind? He knows exactly <laughs> what yeah. I mean. Okay, got it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Using no context clues, oh, I also God. can figure it out. This is going to be a phenomenal <laughs> show. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it is going to be a phenomenal phenomenal show at the time when i chose this ap book two and three wasn't even out yet i mean it's still not out but i have advanced copies uh so i was really like just going off of uh the fact that (laughs) are you ap book dropping i may be book dropping (laughs) i i know some people over paizo they take care of me and uh i i just felt good about the authors and i felt really good about book one well let me tell you something this is going to be a ding hummer and i can't wait (laughs) To get in the room, to get recording. Oh, I get it. It's a get... ding hummer because of the 69. Yeah. Oh, she knows. Yeah. She knows. Yeah. That I followed. I Nailed told it. you Kate knew what you were talking about. <laughs> Where were the authors, Troy? Uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Matthew, uh, because I do like to name drop uh, <laughs> type, 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 the authors. Type, 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 Book type. one was written by James Sutter. 
Uh, book oh, two was not written exact. by Jason Keeley, and Jesus. book three oh. was written by James Jacobs. So it is Jason like- Keeley was in my mm-hmm. old gaming group back in New York, back in like two thousand two and three. So that's what awesome. Happened, what happened to the group? Uh, what always happens? To yeah, the what always happens? I think one guy got married. S- somebody got <laughs> angry about the height of a wall yeah. and the sound a door made when it's supposed to open, and then the, yeah. the group never played together again. Actually, fight. yeah, that actually kind of did happen. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like that exact thing. Actually. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is a tale as old as time. Yeah, but that I mean that three author crew. It's a is, murderous uh, rock, That is yeah. not not exactly lightweights. Those are heavyweights in the RPG. It, it's and. so exciting. I'm so fucking excited. But I just, uh, you know, last week was one of those instances we were playing and uh, you guys killed the denizen of Lang. And I like didn't make a big deal about it. And then I turned it on you guys that you didn't make a big deal about it. And it's because the Skype window was like the eighth window that I had open. And so, because I had so many other things open that I wasn't even looking at you guys. So much of the time, when I'm playing, it's not a big deal because I can just watch or I can just fucking go on ESPN if I'm bored. Um, but like when I'm <laughs> running the game, I have to, uh, I have to like do other shit. And so I can't look at you guys and I'm missing so much by not being able to look at you. So I can't wait to look at your beautiful Dude, faces. Dude, I like, when I run games, which obviously is not, a lot not as much as you or skit but i mean i i deprioritize the adventure the maps like every stat block every important item is deprioritized to your face as being on screen to me I that agree. is the single most important thing i always have it open even if it's just half a screen and your faces are small i always have it open because but Joe, like, you forget that when we record in person troy barely looks at us anyway <laughs> that's true that's true when i look at you it makes you very uncomfortable. <laughs> it, his, his attention is not pleasant. I am very much looking forward to getting back in person because I'm realizing how uh, my excitement level has to be so metered. And that includes my volume. Mm-hmm. Matthew, I'm sure, misses <laughs> me screaming in his ear uh, when Skid rolls a natural 20, like screaming at the top of my lungs. <laughs> and I just, I can't do that at home. It's it's horrible. Like you just constantly feel the guilt of everyone's ears that are right around you. And it sucks. When we were in the office, just let loose, man. It was great. I remember great. what I really miss is how you would uh, get angry at, you know, insert one of three dozen items. Uh, and you would pound the table so hard with your fist that my <laughs> my laptop would flop like flop open. <laughs> We're gonna have I to think, give you a pounding table. I think I remember, Joe. You pounded the table. Hey, we so can build hard. this space out however we want. So now I can have my own pounding <laughs> pounding table. table. Just make you sure pounded you the table like so hard you dice. unplugged you unplugged our mics one time. Yeah. You pounded so hard, all our mics got unplugged under the table. We had to crawl under and reconnect everything. That's not true. Well, no, that's not true. Headphones would get unplugged. It was the headphones that got unplugged, which was worse because we couldn't hear anything. We were like, "Uh, it sounded like the mics were unplugged." In your (laughs) also, it was Grant, but that was (laughs) that one time. Whatever. (laughs) We were loud. Um, Make sure on your pounding table, Joe, you have like a couple of like loose items, like a some dice, a paper clips, and pencils, sharpened pencils, a couple glass, glass a full pint of beer, so they they can rattle. And effectively get the full effect. Yeah. I'm so fucking pumped. So stay tuned. Uh, the tour Actually, dates. Honestly, the thing that I miss too is just like being able to hang out in person before and after. That's something that we've been, I've been certainly missing uh, since we stopped too. So yeah. yeah. The hangs, the hangs. Yeah. We come on here and you know, it's, it's a lot of just, uh, a lot of staring at each other. Sometimes I'm just reading over my notes and it's like, all right, it's time to record. We lose all that. Like, hey, how you doing? How's well, your day been? Yeah, because you're also like looking at 10 or 15 things. Like you have to make sure that all your shit's open and, and it's working properly. And I'm always listening to just hear everybody's microphone, make sure it's turned on or at the yeah. right spot or what, you know. Like and you can't on, have more than one conversation at a time is the other true. thing. That's, that's so true. true. That it it has to be everyone's listening to one person and then it's like, and we move on to the next person. Right, right now it's your turn. Yeah. I can't wait to have arguments where we talk over each other a lot because I've only ever played with you guys like three times live or otherwise just like this. So I don't yeah. have any of this bantering experience to chuckle with you all about. <laughs> oh, you're going to love it. <laughs> we're going to oh, chuckle so the much. The chuckling Dave. is going to be so <laughs> off the chain. It's A1. Chuckling A1 off chuckling. the charts. 
Your face is going to hurt. We laugh so much. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. That's true, Kate. The only times we ever played in person, there were all, there's also an audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Which we tempers just, the chuckles. Yeah. We can just be ourselves when we are in a room alone. <laughs> yep. Anyway. It's going to be a great time. We're going to get back on tour soon. I was saying, uh, get excited. We're going to announce some dates really soon. And then new Glass Cannon podcast. It's coming. I can't wait. But I am enjoying this. But really, the point of this show is to just get in our bones this new group here. This is this is the group going forward. It gets spend some more time together and spend some more time with two E. Um, this is like um, this is like training more than anything. And it's and a shame to belittle it like that because it really is an awesome AP. It is like, for sure. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you can have whatever you can you know you can nitpick uh, that um, the sort of. Rep- Whatever, I don't want to get into it. The point is, like, this moment that we left last episode on, I could not stop thinking about. Like, I could just see the image, and it's so disturbing and so interesting and so perfectly horror, like, cosmic horror that, like, I I just, I'm so into it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't wait. I was very, very, no matter what happens, I could die. Suki could die, and I'd be like, that was so cool. So mm-hmm. worth. Yeah, so I awesome. agree. I totally, Suki could totally die. And I'd be like, that was all <laughs> worthwhile. Or Aldo. I mean, Aldo well, could die. And I would be like, that. who even cares? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but oh, Suki okay. could totally die. And I'd be like, man, you know what? It's all good. <laughs> well, if you've been thinking about this moment, let's pick it up right at that moment we left last week. You dispatched of the hounds, you dispatched of the denizen of Lang, and then you started to walk into the courtyard, got sort of an uneasy feeling at the tracks and whatnot. You're like, you know what? This is not what we're here for. We're here to meet with the Yellow King. So you go into the doorway that you went into last time, swooping around the rooms uh, that you fought enemies in last time. There was an animated dream posing as a shopkeep. There was a haunt that little did you know was giving you uh, visions of dream quests to come. There was a uh, formless spawn, this black ooze that came out of the one of the baths. And then there was an empty room with a bunch of ledgers that were indecipherable and a staircase leading up. Well, you're back at that room, but it is not empty this time. The ledgers are all there, but there's someone standing there, or sitting there rather, reading. And when you open the door, you start to feel this sick feeling of dread. It really affects Ethel, who's in the vanguard here in this five foot wide hallway. You're the only one that can really reach the door. Atticus starts to feel that uh, weird, uh, like unsettled feeling as well, but you actually take on Frightened One. I'm a bit frightened. By what, by what you see. <laughs> so I'm going to reveal it, and, uh, and then we're going to talk about it. There's a man, uh, I believe I said he is immaculately dressed, mm-hmm. he's sitting behind the desk. And he looks like this. That's oh. horrific. Ooh. That is the worst uh, thing I've ever seen. No. Troy, I'm sorry. Could you do it one more time? I apologize. I, I clicked right at the wrong time. Oh, no. The teeth. Have, so. have you the guys seen The Haunting eyes? of the Hill House? We talked about this recently, but have you I, seen it? Yeah. I haven't. I haven't seen it, but I, I read it. But uh, uh, just the large mouth. So many teeth. So I many teeth. Eris would be scared of him. Eris is probably like, oh, what a fine looking gentleman. Ooh, yeah. look at his long fingers. <laughs> is this another suitor? <laughs> what on earth is Eris scared of? Like, I couldn't even imagine something that scares Eris. I feel like Eris has seen this man. She's just like, oh, Jeffrey, my <laughs> uncle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Uncle Roy. My, my uncle Roy. Fancy <laughs> see Uncle Roy. Yeah. What are you Roy doing? Fingers. <laughs> Roy, Roy Fingers. Roy Fingers. You're looking fierce. <laughs> Uncle Roy, what are you doing here in the cabin? Stop, <laughs> stop it with the finger, Uncle Roy. We, 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 <laughs> get out of my friends. dreams, Uncle Roy. Oh, Uncle Roy, you're always doing that finger thing. Uh, <laughs> he, flip in addition those nails, to being, Uncle Roy. In addition to being incredibly tall and thin with those fingers, the top hat and pants are vertically striped, and he's wearing a red vest. And you can never really trust anyone wearing a red vest. He's a carny. Sure. There is a bit of a carnival feel to him, right? A kind of a step right up. I'll yeah. guess your weight or kill you. Yeah. Um, um uh, excuse me, uh, uh sir. Uh and whoa. you start talking, he's like And you can see he's reading and moving his lips while he reads. 
Who is it? Who are you talking to? Atticus uh, is going to move past Ethel, just behind him, so that he can look into the room at least uh, and see. Oh, this someone you know? Just no, I don't remember. Well, I guess we'll let him finish. Without even looking up, he says, Can I ask what you may know about accounting or mathematics? Uh, I took a short course on accounting because I do want to open my own small business. (laughs) I am just fascinated, and he slaps the book. Fascinated by this writing and believe that the, the gibberish within contains some fundamental mathematical truth that I cannot yet discern. What is it that you are reading, if I may ask? It appears to be a, a ledger from the previous caretaker of this establishment. Oh, this place. This place used to be marvelous. Always a pleasant spot to come and meet the most interesting people. Travelers from all over this plane and the next, looking for a place to relax before heading out on the next leg of their adventure. But this former caretaker clearly let it fall into disrepair. Oh, I remember many a stop here in my youth. It's nice to return, though. Even though much has changed. You guys making a new friend over here? What's going on? Who are you talking to? Uh, there's, there's someone in the room. Yeah, are you, uh, so you're the new caretaker? That's what I'm gathering from what you're saying? Oh my good man, no, no. I'm just, just here uh, reading, trying to make heads and tails of this. I believe there is something in here of import. I'm a man that's always interested in knowledge. And I believe there is some interesting knowledge hereabouts. Uh, you have some friends with you, yes? I uh, Yes, we are travelers as well. It's oh. just passing through. Please come, come in. Maybe you could help me decipher this. this so well, uh, I will say we are in a bit of a hurry, and foremost on our mind is uh, a gentleman goes by the name of the Yellow King. Have you seen him here? We can get to that in due time. Uh, perhaps you could help me with these books, yes. Ethel steps in. Oh, yeah, I'll take a look. Here, let me see. Let me... <laughs> Ethel, be careful. Here you are. And he hands you, and his arms are a little too long, his fingers are a little too long, as he reaches out and hands you this book. And even though he's sitting, he towers over you. And I'm, I'm holding my Warhammer and my scimitar and this book in my arms. <laughs> he doesn't even <laughs> blink an eye. What do I see within the ledger? Uh... It is completely this like symbols and words that you've never seen before. I mean, it it's it, it's 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 in a language you don't understand, but it doesn't even look like a written language. The way it's it's like somebody took a pen and did this. Um, it's it's way way beyond comprehension. It almost looks purposefully um, Ob- obfuscated. indecipherable, <laughs> indecipherable, ob- obfuscated, obfuscatory. Uh, have yes. you considered the possibility that someone is trying to uh, prevent you from understanding the contents of this book with the oh. scribble scrabble? <laughs> no, 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 I believe you are mistaken, my friend. Clearly, someone doesn't want this information to be read by the likes of you or me. So I must just continue to decipher. I love a good puzzle. Do you like puzzles? Indeed, I do. Let me take a look. And any of you that have now come into view here, Suki, Eris, and Aldo, also roll a will save. Okay. I forgot about that. Uh, it's not... That's a Ooh. 22. Okay. Uh, Aldo got a 27. And Suki? 33. I roll a natty 18. Ooh. All right, so Suki, you're able to steal yourself, but Aldo and Eris, you feel you are frightened one. You just, there's something about the aura that he is giving off that just makes you unsettled. Even you, Eris, unsettled. Like, you get this feeling like this is a rival of yours, though you've never met him before in your life. And, and that is the feeling that leads to dread. And Aldo, you just 
you see this man and you feel like a child again, having a horrible nightmare. And you think of, um, what was the Sheila? You think of young Sheila mm. and you think of like her twisting and turning in her bed. And maybe you were sent to give her an elixir to calm her down. You have that memory sort of wrapped up with your own memory of being a child and seeing things. And, uh, it's just very, very unsettling. Thankfully, Atticus and Suki are not frightened, but he does not appear, appear aggressive, just very interested in what he's reading. What, uh, may I ask, is your objective here? What are you seeking to learn from these tomes? Well, at the moment, I'm just passing the time, yes? I didn't think I'd come upon such interesting tomes, but... Uh, here we are. Passing yes. the time until what? Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, you're trying to distract me, yes? Oh, no, I'm also <laughs> trying to decipher this book. It is quite engrossing. And he's looking at all of these like figures. and He's not a math guy. Uh, in fact, I couldn't even begin to figure out what to roll for this. I never thought of this before. <laughs> yeah. Like, there is no linguistics. Right. There is no mathematics. Like, uh, is it? like? <laughs> it's so funny, because all the other knowledges seem to come, I, I guess, society, society you would default guess. to. Yeah. Like, is that what math falls under? The same well, math thing. Math would be, I don't know. And nature? you're saying that the math, you would roll the same skill to learn math as you would to learn, like, to understand people's emotions from a certain culture. Like, it just doesn't fit. Well, yeah. there's two things here at work, right? I feel like it falls under some sort of lore. I mean, I'm sure you could take lore and mathematics, but I don't think anyone in the history yeah. of this game has taken that. Uh, but there might be cool thing to some take. sort of adjacent skill to that, um, uh, you know, that you could use, and I would let you kind of stretch that here. But you're also trying to just, like, get him to talk a little bit exactly. more as well. So maybe deception? I'm, yeah, all right. I'm just trying to show off some intelligence. Is, yeah, is really what I'm what I'm trying to do. Uh, so could I not roll deception? You could roll performance as a trained performer. Maybe oh. this is something you're. Uh, yeah. You know, you're using your background as a performer to try and like sleight of hand the conversation. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Like I'll that. Say, oh. oh. Wait a minute. Maybe I do see something here. You know, it it looks like complete chaos, but there is some order to this oh dude natty 18 that is a 29 performance nice. 29 performance there is some order to this chaos you see it indeed yes. i do the answers are not coming right away but there is something here yes yes i knew that i wasn't alone in my thinking here Good, good. Well, it's good to have someone to uh, confer with about should we uh, discover anything here. Um, I, I do apologize. I've been so wrapped up in my reading. I didn't even get your name, sir. Uh, what is your name? I am Atticus Grimm of Ustalov. Uh, my friends can introduce themselves. Atticus Grimm of Ustalov. I'm, uh, is that on the material plane? Yes, have you heard of me? Oh, of course, I've heard of the, I've not heard of you, but I've heard of the material plane. Are you all from the material plane? <laughs> Indeed yep. we are. We uh, are merely uh, travelers here. Well, uh, yes, we Elder, all, please, yes. I'm sorry I interrupted. He has a rather interesting story. <laughs> I'm from the material plane. The material plane, all of you. Wonderful. I have spent some time there, but it has been many, many years. Yes, I've made the Plateau of Lang my home low these past decades, and uh, it's a fine place to stay. Uh, I don't know if I'll settle there for the rest of my life. To be honest, coming back here to a place from my youth, perhaps I'll uh, move in here. Looks like it's quite wide open. Pardon. Suki interrupts yes. from outside the doorway. She's not frightened, but she maybe because she rolled well and is not frightened, She's like, I absolutely do not trust this guy. Uh, she says, pardon. Yeah. I didn't quite get your name. Oh, I do apologize. My name is Mr. Wanderlust. That's your name? Why, yes. Are you familiar with my work? You're from the Dreamlands, I take it? I have spent most of my life... Uh, in the dreamlands, yes, but I've spent time in other places as well. I'm, I'm well-traveled, as they say. Um, 
but you spent spend, some time yes. in the material plane, you said. Yes, I Did have. you go by the name Mr. Wanderlust there? Uh, I, sometimes in my youth I went by many names, but I'm Mr. Wanderlust now, and that's all that matters, yes? You feel familiar to me. Would I know you by another name if we had crossed paths on the material plane? <laughs> I do not know, my dear, about your youth, but uh, perhaps we met at one time or another, or one of my kind, but uh, I'd remember you, and I don't think we've met. Hmm. Can can Suki roll dream lore to yeah. know if he is, like, a thing in the yeah. dreamlands? Absolutely. If he's someone, if he's a name. Kind of a <laughs> big deal in the dreamlands. <laughs> is he somebody? Is he somebody? Seventeen, natural seventeen. What's my dream? Holy lore? shit! For a plus thirteen. That's so, a thirty, dude. 30, wow. 29. 29? Right. Thirty. Twenty-nine. It's a very good roll. Thirty. And you'll need it. I want to know the actual number, though. Okay. Thirty. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thirty. You have not heard of Mister Wanderlust, however, you. Maybe because you're not frightened by the aura that he's giving off, it allows you to focus in on what type of a being he is. And he is a bogeyman, sometimes known oh. as a boogeyman. Uh, this is someone that haunts the dreams of children. <gasps> Yo! Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, Match no. made in you heaven. say this out loud that he's a bogeyman? I would um, also let you know. Are sparks flying? That roll Eris is high shoves enough. everyone out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> that roll is high enough for you to know that this is a creature that is much more powerful than all of you. I think maybe Suki is familiar with bogeymen, boogeymen, just from her studies of dream lore, uh, occult, um, and she kind of puts two and two together, um, traveling between planes, the sharp teeth, the long, the elongated limbs and fingers. And she does whisper, uh, probably to Eris and Aldo, because they're the closest to her. Um, she says, this is a bogeyman. <gasps> they're very, very powerful. Oh, I've and heard of that. We should not, not interrupt whatever it is he was doing. And Aldo, Mr. like, Wonderful's shrieks. Aldo, sh oh, sorry. I, ever, I've it. never been so excited to be so terrified to be in your presence. I love what you do. I also try to haunt children's dreams. Ever, what? Let us not speak of such things, yes? We are but here to gain okay. knowledge. Yes, I'm sorry. We can talk about work some other time. Yes, so sorry. <laughs> She's like kind of <laughs> starstruck, maybe. But I terrified. Guess, I guess before that exchange, Aldo like shrieks, like screams like a little Girl Scout at the top of his lungs. <laughs> it's like, ah, and, like immediately like bites down on his fist to stop himself. And just kind of draws back into the shadows. And Mr. Wanderlust looks up at you and says, Ah, yes. I do apologize. I wish it was something I could turn off, but we've all lived lives and perhaps seen people like me trickle into the dreams of your youth. But we are sophisticated men and women, are we not? We can discuss things and learn together, yes? Uh, one thing uh, I personally like to learn, uh, Ethel is like trying to fight against the fear, but it's just like, it's just really unsettling. Um, don't look at me like that ever again, please, Troy. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's fucking <laughs> Just channeling the photo. One thing I'd like to learn, um, we're looking for this uh, uh, king in yellow guy. Have you seen him around? We're supposed to meet <laughs> with him, have a coffee. I don't know. Ah, uh, yes, yes, my companions are in search for this yellow king. Um, a woman by the name of Weirale brought me here as a consultant. She is the head of operation. She came in search of this yellow king. In truth, I'm not sure what she wanted with him. To kill him, perhaps? 
She wasn't clear, but she needs him out of the picture, as it were. I suggested she strand him on the moon, in case he might be useful at some later time. I can only hope she followed my recommendation. That is what she hired me for, after all, to be a consultant. Uh, so where might, might we talk to her? Is she here? Uh, he, he, like, looks over towards the stairway. He's like, she went upstairs not long ago. It's not my place to go and check in on her, and I've been quite enjoying reading these ledgers. Um, so she's up there. She either disposed of him or took him away. Uh, who knows what? You're welcome to go check. I, I'll just sit here with my books. It was a pleasure meeting you. Perhaps we'll meet again. Thank you. And Ethel just like backs out of the room. Good luck with your research. Thank you. And you do see a staircase here uh, leading up uh, on the southeast portion. Oh, it's of the in room. the room. It's like it's in up, the room. Yeah. In the room. Okay. And he's just going back to his book. <laughs> Turning it upside down, reading it upside down. Atticus is still looking at him as he's, even as he walks to follow Ethel, his eyes linger on the bogeyman. And he's just like, I will endeavor to do the same. There is, after all, much to learn here. Uh, and he seems like distracted and kind of lost by the power of this creature and the fact that even it doesn't understand these books and Atticus has been trying to decipher these books like this for a while now. Um, I, can, I can picture you as like a small rat boy running down a black hallway while a creature that looks like the bogeyman but like Beetlejuice when Beetlejuice goes crazy and gets super yeah. large like chasing you <laughs> and you see that same face in Mr. Wanderlust as he sits there reading. But I'm not a child anymore. Um, yeah, he's gonna, and he's gonna, I'm gonna, he's gonna mark this dude. Like, he's gonna mark this guy. Be like, oh, we will meet again. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm staying as vigilant as he is in terms of knowledge and research to make sure that he doesn't get the upper hand when they do meet again. Ethel, why don't yeah. you go upstairs? Let's go upstairs. Yes, please. Please. We go upstairs. You Looks walk. like the stairs are in the room, right? They sure are. You walk around Aldo. the corner. Aldo, we're going upstairs. <laughs> Yell that. Aldo kind of edges along the wall to be as far away from the boogeyman as possible as he makes his way towards the stairs. Suki holds Aldo's hand. She heard him scream. <laughs> she was right there. She holds his hand, like two hands on top of one another on his, and she says... It's okay. And as they pass the Mr. Wanderlust, uh, yeah, Suki also looks over and she says, Normally I would say it's been a pleasure, but sincerely, I hope we never cross paths again, Mr. Wanderlust. Goodbye. And Aldo is squeezing her hand to the point of probably pain. Ow. That <laughs> don't, really don't talk to it. Hurts. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Bye. Don't, <laughs> don't encourage it. And you walk. <laughs> past this creepy dude towards the stairs. It does beg the question. This is completely out of character. But for Eris, can the boogeyman love? <laughs> I want to know. Question. I want to know. Who it's, says the boogeyman is my type? I'm just curious if true. the boogeyman they might can just be love. Work I, soulmates, uh. not romantic soulmates. Right. I just want to know if the possibility might even exist. Could be platonic. I mean, Good yes, friends. Co companions in the devouring of children's souls. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to imagine it's like both of them just like sucking souls in and like orgasmically looking at each other. <laughs> and that's what it is for them. <laughs> Love can take many different forms. <laughs> I mean, orgasmically I looking at each other. Yeah, like they're sucking. So it's not like a romantic thing. It's, it's like, like that is there. Just an orgasm. Side by yeah. side. A platonic I mean, orgasm. I imagine yeah. it must be something like the time I almost met Edward Albee. I, obviously, I didn't want to like marry Edward Albee because, um, well, many reasons, but I deeply admire him. 
And, and you looked I, at him orgasmically. It's I like, looked at her, <laughs> him orgasmically. <laughs> yeah. It was at the it was at the Broadway flea market. Caitlin was working, and she was like, "You should go over and get something signed." He was like sitting at a table, and I looked over orgasmically, and then I just ran away. <laughs> it's like you don't know if you want to be them or be with them. Yeah, mostly, I was just afraid. Um, <laughs> mostly, you were frightened. One. I mostly I was frightened. <laughs> one, and then I ran. So I guess I was panicked. Actually. <laughs> so that's exactly how Eris feels. Then, yeah. yeah. Ladies Mr. and Albie. gentlemen, the bogeyman of the American theater, Edward Alby. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Alby, what are your feelings on 69 He probably was a very scary man. <laughs> uh, you walk up the stairs while he reads his book and looks up at you as you walk by. We'll take a quick break before we find out what happens next. Ethel is in the front. Atticus, I believe, if we're keeping same party order, is right behind. Oh, yes. Followed by Sooks. And then Sooks, the Snake. Magooks. Sook, and Aldo. We're being pulled into the darkness. Where are you ah! taking my pod? <laughs> Against our will. Jim is exerting his absolute ah! control over us. We're in pitch black. You. We are just pawns in this game of chess. <laughs> We're all pawns. <laughs> what did I say? We're all pawns in the game. Yeah. Pawns in chess. Pawn, a pawn game of chess. A pawn game of chess. Thank you. <laughs> if you refer just to the right of this map, you'll see another map. Shakakakakaku. With a staircase. And Ethel takes a step forward into the room. This is the room where you met the Yellow King. See, uh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You've already started. I just felt like this is exact. Whatever. I said, this is where we were. We met him in the bottom right. And I swear, last year was, uh, it was the other side. This was, it was down here. Well, you're upstairs then. Yeah. But uh, uh, we are in the southeast corner going up, right? Southeast corner of the caravanserai going up. And, and from this the outside, is the room where we met him before. This is the room where you met him before. Um, and he'll brief Ethel on that fact very, very briefly. This is where he was before. As you remember, the as there were a bunch of paintings of landscapes as you were going up the stairway. Um, they're still there, but they're actually like askew on the wall. And when Ethel steps forward, you see that there uh, is very clearly an evidence of a fight that happened in this room. Uh, things are pushed all over the place. Um, I mean, you've seen this throughout in the room where the haunt was. Everything was pushed to the side. The room where the hounds and the denizen of Lang was. They were looking for something or searching for something. Well, here it looks like there was a fight with the paintings hanging askew on the walls. Um, a chair is smashed. The door to the north stands slightly ajar and actually one of its hinges is broken. But as Ethel steps forward, you are not alone in this room. Unfortunately, it is not the Yellow King in this room. It is three denizens of Lang. Oh, oh no. no. Shit. Wow. Roll for initiative. No. Oh, no. oh boo. Yes. on a cracker. Well, maybe I'll get to cut one of their heads off. Are we That's so true. frightened if we're not by the boogeyman? Uh, you are no longer frightened. I will confirm that after initiative. I believe you are no longer frightened because you also had some time. It's not like you were in combat. Uh, unless it lasts a day or hours, you should be fine. Let me just see. 
Uh, you can find one frightened. Is not produce. Yeah, you are no longer in the aura, so you're no longer frightened. Nice. Uh, works a little different than traditional frightened. Let's talk about Anish Aldo. Uh, 17 for Aldo. 17 for Aldo. Ethel. 33. 33, mm. little Larry Bird action. Mm. Uh, Atticus Grimm. I'm sorry, 34. Correction. A little Bo Jackson oh. action. <laughs> uh, Atticus. 24. 24. Eris. 18. 18. Suki. 23. Okay. Okay. That is the Lang. One of them, at least, gets the jump. Um, the one here standing in the back of the room. So there's three of them. Uh, there's one to the south, sort of to the right of the table where the Yellow King was standing, and then there's two standing in the northwest corner of the room. Well, the one that is uh, against the wall, uh, south of the one to the north, immediately casts Mirror Image to start. Oh, dear. It's not good. Okay. Um, and then seeing Just Ethel... Just don't attack that one, Ethel. <laughs> which which one has Mirror Image? The north. Western, westerly one? Um, no, the, the, the one to the, in the middle. So if it's like one, two, three, it would be the two. Okay. The one in the middle of, uh, from top to bottom. Um, I tried to make that as complicated as possible. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's, there's two middles. There's two middles, yeah. Well, if you think there's it's one, like diagonal two, billing. Three. Who's on the top? Who's on the, who's on the one? <laughs> All right, so mirror image was two actions, um, and then he, uh, steps... Uh, steps down to the southern part of the room. Okay. Uh, and now it is Ethel's turn. Good Anish, Ethel. Um, I get a little bonus. Okay, great. Well, I'm, gl- I'm glad he. I don't have to look. I was going to look up uh, ways I could shove this guy out of the way. You mostly just shove. Okay, uh, Ethel is going to slide. Let's see. I put you know a little Let's condition see. on him to denote mirror image. Ethel is going to kind of dart, you know, Bibbing and bobbing, he's going to he's gonna slide around to the northwest corner of this room and provoke from this guy if he has an attack of opportunity. Okay. Um, so you don't actually walk through his space. You just no, no, kind of zippity-doo. Uh, he doesn't... If if he does have an attack of opportunity, he doesn't use it. You haven't seen the denizens of Lang incorporate that yet, but you don't know if these are special denizens, but he lets you slide right past. He's like, ah! Okay. And I'm going to do a double slice for my final two actions. Uh, one with the one with the warhammer and one with the scimitar. Come on, Vorpal, snicker Ar- snack. <laughs> Orange is the scimitar. To keep myself honest. Wait, 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 wait. But they, does it take the multiple attack penalty? No. Oh, neither slice does. Great. Yeah, it's a, for double for double slice. You take you swing twice with each of your weapons in your hands, and then not you go to your full attack bonus, and then the, your iterative attack then goes it's a down third two penalty. steps. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Um, okay, well, that is a natural 16 from the from the scimitar. So that's going to be a, a 34. Okay. Uh, and a natural 4 on the warhammer, so that's going to be a 23. Uh, okay. Completely lost my AC here. You said 23, and what was the other one? 34. All right, the 23 misses, the 34 hits. All right, so just hit with the scimitar. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Not, not really. Uh, it's gonna be. I rolled a. I rolled three. Uh, so it's gonna be nine points of damage from the oh, scimitar. Oh, that can't be right. The, are you using the additional damage dice for striking? It's two oh. d. Si- it's two d six. Plus six is what I have. Yeah. The striking is, right. makes it makes it two d six instead of one d six. Is it agile? Oh, it the is scimitar. Agile. It is yes. no. Oh, it's no. no. I see. It's got finesse, yeah, no, forceful, and and sweep. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, forceful, agile. magical, and sweep. It is not agile. Yeah, so that is e- Ethel's turn. Brutes. Brutes. Magoots. It is now the other Denizen of the Ling's turn. Uh, oh the one next to you is actually going to step back and is going to cast Mirror Image. The one at the bottom is going to... Um, Cast mirror image. I, I'm relay. I'm shouting back. Uh, battlefield. There's uh, twelve of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were three. Now there's twelve. 
is going to cast mirror image and then create a sort of blocked path here. It's going to move to the north so that anyone that comes in is going to have to deal with the two of them. So kind of, it's a very interesting setup here. Obviously, it seems like they don't have an attack of opportunity, but they have created a, a bit of a bottleneck situation here that uh, everyone single file on that staircase is going to have to pass by them uh, or deal with them before they move to the one in the back. You know Ethel can hang, uh, but with mirror image, it's, uh, it's going to be a little tricky. Uh, but they're all done now, so you get around to see what you can do. It is Atticus's turn. Oh, for Christ's sake. Oh, uh, what a horrible goddamn situation. Um, <laughs> for real. Yeah, I mean, they're closing off the door, and nobody can get in there. And, oh, for shit's sake. Is this uh, to the north, Troy's center of the northern wall? Is that an open doorway? That's a door that is slightly ajar and almost hanging on its hinges, like someone got thrown into it and broke the door. Got it. Um, shit. Uh, all right, Atticus is going to take one step up because uh, he hasn't really gotten a look in this room. So he's going to take a step up and get a look, and he sees immediately that there's two, two creatures right there. Uh, Right you see of eight gate. of them. You know, you see eight of them. They're just like all in this overlapping in the same spot. It's going to be very disorienting. Uh, very disorienting. Okay. Uh, man. In that case, he's going to use what I believe to be. Yeah, he's going to use a spell that is going to home in, I would think, on the actual, uh, the actual denizen, regardless of their mirror images. So uh, he is going to cast uh, Electric Arc. Um, okay. So he steps up there and he just you, starts this incantation and his paws start glowing, this blue crackling, and then he puts it out and two hands attack two creatures at the same time and they home in directly on the one that is not a mirror image. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a basic reflex save. So I just need a reflex save from both of them. Okay. Um, the one uh, at the top of the room rolls a natural one. Amazing. Nice. Uh, and then the other one rolls a uh, 32. Bit of a... Uh, natural <laughs> one and a 32. Okay. Um, so that is... I've been uh, rolling like shit for the past month on the show. <laughs> that is four points of damage to the one that rolled the 32 and 16 points of damage to the one that rolled the natural one. Wow, nice. Uh, Dang. So, or, yeah, it sears through and uh, and directly hits the real creature. The real creature. All right. Uh, and that is his turn. You said 16, right? And uh, and four. Okay, and that's the one that, that Ethel had hit. Um, okay, great. Wait, wait. Well, the one that Ethel hit took four or 16? 16. All right, so Atticus is going to be like, the one in the front right here. He's pointing forward like, take it out. Focus your fire. And it's Suki's turn. That's when you hear Suki. You're behind Eris on the stairwell. Um, and you just hear, I mean, imagine the stairwell is very, very thin. There's like a wall around you. You can't see into the room yet, but you just hear spells, Ethel's war cry. What do you do, Suki? Suki is going to run up past Eris Past Atticus. Hello. Hello. Excuse, excuse <laughs> me. Hello. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, and she's going <laughs> to use on, her man. full movement speed to get uh, diagonal from one of the Johns in kind of the center of the room. <laughs> yes, yes. Sydney. Well, man, I wish us. we were recording in person. Yep. Just give me a high five. Oh, a big old bear big hug. Big high five. Um, <laughs> Poor uh, cheese. Trying to open up this area, and then I am. Ah, fuck it. I'm going to do a uh, wild shape and I am going to yeah. rip out of my dress and turn into a large sized grizzly bear. Oh. What? Try to find that paw in as fast as you can. <laughs> what? Oh, I can. Amazing. I can find a bear skin rug. Oh, hell yeah. I'm a dead bear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> large uh, in the center of the room. Uh, Oh, and you just and you yeah. the table smashes under your weight. <laughs> <laughs> it splinters as you. My grow. jaws just ah, spit flying everywhere, but I can't do anything because that's my last two actions. But now I'm a bear. Oh no! Okay, all right. So Suki the bear, uh, perfect. Suki bear. Uh, I will give you control of that bearskin rug, and it Thank is Eris's turn. Well, <laughs> it's a bearskin rug. 
<laughs> um, all right, so I can't see them yet. I heard you, you, Ethel, say that there were three and now there are 12 of them. <laughs> so therefore I cast mirror image on myself. So there are four of me. Um, and then I want to move into the room just in case I need to give Ethel maybe some extra eyes. So I'm going to run past these two and maybe, maybe go right here. Ah, okay. Right next On the to other Suki. side of Suki the bear. Hell go to yeah. the far wall. Oh, God. You don't like right, that? This, no, this is why I love oh. <laughs> 2E movement and the AOO thing. Just like you can actually have fun as opposed <laughs> yeah. to just getting bottlenecked into a doorway and not being able to do fucking anything. Uh, I love that you can just run through, you know, these characters and get into an interesting fighting position. Yeah, look at already how much the battlefield has changed. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Mirror image, and then you and you had enough movement to get over there, right? Oh, I have 25 feet. So that's 5, 10, 15. Okay, so maybe I go, like, here. On the yeah. other side of Suki, <laughs> that makes next sense. to this denizen. Uh, okay, great. Uh, and now it is Aldo's turn to finish out the round. Aldo is behind Pepsi. Aldo is going to take his last remaining infusion held in reserve and prepare and drink a ch moderate cheetah's elixir, gulp, 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 which will give him a bonus 10 feet of movement. Nice. And he's going to run up the stairs with the incredible alacrity. And uh, he's going to use his final action to throw a dread ampule at the feet of the Jessica of Lang. Uh, right next to him. There's a little wall there um, on the stairs, but you can hit the one uh, to the north from where you're standing. Okay. And that's the one that's taking the most damage. So that's all perfect. right. Yes, I will throw. I will throw at that one. Uh, awesome. Uh, that is a 35 to hit. Yo, that is a hit, not a crit. Okay. All right. Uh, roll uh, a d4. Oh, right. Um, ah, yes. Uh, one. Okay, oh, that is yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, that is 12 points of damage and and uh, four points of splash damage to his buddy there next adjacent to him. Okay. Nice. And the target is Frightened One until the beginning of my next turn. Heck yeah. Frightened One, okay. Also, uh, Troy, I want to say Pepsi is back on uh, Suki's person. She hasn't commanded Pepsi to do anything. Okay. Um, let's do that little white flag. It's like, I'm frightened. I'm surrendering. Uh, <laughs> and I'll just move uh, Pepsi off the map until you want him to be back in. All right, great. Solid round one. Let's move to round two. And we start with the denizen of Lang. Uh, that is uh, all the way to the south next to Suki the bear. Looks like Suki the bear is going to um, have a spell cast on her. Um, uh -oh. Do you gain attack of opportunity as a bear? No, <laughs> yeah, I, I sure wish so. I did. Uh, then go ahead and give me a will save. <laughs> oh, dude. God, all right, wait, hold on. Gotta get back to my page. I keep all my stats, so that's easy, but... Uh, a 24? It's a fail. <sighs> Denison oh, the Lang says, sweet bear. Sweet bear, there's some honey over there in the corner. Go and find it. Go and eat all the honey, you fucking dumb bears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with that failure, you have to immediately follow that suggestion. Um, what corner? Where is he pointing? Uh, way over here. Cool. <laughs> oh, man. Go eat that honey, you dumb fucking bear. <laughs> <laughs> it says, Did I say that you're, uh, by calling me a dumb fucking bear, that is an act of aggression? He and is the not. spell does not work? <laughs> it was quite aggressive. I, heard, I, I think there was, was a lot of aggression. I nice heard a lot of snickering and laughing. He's, he's being much nicer than I am. I just think it's <laughs> funny that he... 
Oh, you stupid. Um, <laughs> well, I think the failure just sh shows how stupid you are, because that's yeah. how the character's talking to you, and you still do it. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Like, you're so Baru? dumb. <laughs> yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is going to, I mean, if, if someone doesn't take you out of this, it's going to take you out of the combat. Wait, um, completely? Yeah, because it lasts for a minute or until the target has completed the finite suggestion. Spoiler okay, but hold alert. on. There's no honey over there. There's no we've, honey, though. We've Wouldn't done the, this before. The bear would simply be like... I'm going to let you figure out how you want to interpret okay. it. All right. If you can sleep with yourself. Okay. Tonight, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Uh, <laughs> it, I still have one action left. All right, you dumb bear. You're dumb. You're dumb. You, you realize that the spell, the, 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 the wording and the spell for suggestion begins with your honeyed words. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably before I got the idea. Really funny. <laughs> um, Suki the bear, go eat your honey. Uh, it has one action left, and uh, I think I'm just going to move. I'm going to move right behind Suki the bear. Um, just make it a little bit more difficult for anybody get to get to him. And now it's Ethel's turn. So Ethel, you're about 10 feet away from a guy who's uh, taken the most damage. Uh, and he also is a uh, frightened one, uh, but he has four mirror images on him as well. What do you yeah, think? so Ethel is going to slide back to position himself between the two denizens of Lang in the north half of the room, and then I'm going to do a double slice on the guy of the north. Okay. Uh, and hopefully I will hit, and then hopefully I will hit him. Okay, I rolled two natural 17s. Nice. Oh, amazing. Come All right, on. I get so one through to him. Start with a d4 on the first attack. D3. Oh, yeah, the skid didn't bust one. Skid hit That's him. Right. One. Yeah. Okay. Oh, That's the scimitar. Oh. What's the total on that? Um, just to make sure it's not a crit. Uh, so with the scimitar, that'll be a 35 to hit. All right, not a crit, but a hit. And then the second one would also be a 35, uh, assuming it's the same to hit. So no, it's actually, that one's actually a 36. Oh, still a hit. Um, give me a... D4. Yeah. Four, so it destroys an image. With destroys destroy an one image. image. And then I'll give you... And one big hit. Some scimitar damage here. Uh, that's slightly better, 11 points of damage. Okay. And that is my turn. Great, 11 points of damage. Let's check this guy out, perfect. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, now it is my Dennis and the Lang's turn. Uh, of course, you're standing right there and uh, that's gonna make it a little bit difficult for them to cast without taking an AOL, but they've got fucking uh, mirror image, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, okay, first guy is going to reach out and uh, attempt to touch you with a spell. So do you want to take your attack of opportunity? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to do the it with one. the scimitar, even though it's less damage, because I'm going to hope for that natural turn. Come on, get it, dude. Please. Come on, bro. Natural 19. <laughs> oh, my God. Gun <laughs> oh. that's a crit. Well, that, right, thing. that might be right, a It still might be a crit. Fall. You could disrupt the spell. 37. 37. That has to be a crit. Is a crit. Uh, yes. You disrupted yes. the spell. But now you've got to roll uh, a D3, and you've uh, got to roll a one on a D3. Uh, do I right. still disrupt it if I critically destroy one of his images? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Two. Damn it. Dude, uh, that mirror image is humongous. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that would, oh, imagine if I disrupted a Vorpal, you wouldn't want to play anymore. <laughs> like no, the mirror would, I chop his fucking head up! It's so hard for that to happen. Uh, that would have been so cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm going to cast, I'm telling you right now, just for uh, transparency sp sake, I'm gonna cast Chill Touch on you. Um, so give me a fortitude save. Change of dice. Uh, 32. 32 is a success, um, so you'll take half damage. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Right. Thank Eight you. points of cold damage. Okay. Okay. Chill touch, uh, and then uh, he's going to step back, and then the other one is going to uh, also cast a spell on you. Uh, go ahead and 
You can't use your reaction because you've already used it. Already. So just give me a will save. Will save. Okay. Okay. Uh, twenty-six. That's a fail. And this <laughs> is the one I tried to get on Joe. This is Phantom Pain. Um, so you're going to right out the gate take uh, seven points of mental damage. Um, okay. And the target takes full initial and persistent, and your sickened one. Sickened one. Yep. If you recover from being sickened, the persistent damage will end because you're also going to take one d4 persistent mental damage. Okay. Okay. And then it is also going to move to the. If I was going to step to the north, just above you. Okay. Very cool. Now it is Atticus's turn. Oh, Troy, Troy, Troy. <laughs> oh, I stood in the line. Fuck! You fool. <laughs> oh, yes. I was yes. going to do 17 other things. I stood in the line. Until you did that. Well, so I never His gave foolish you friend no stepping in front of Ethel put himself directly in a line right in front of Atticus. One, two. And uh, this is just a I didn't line. even need to do that because he couldn't take a reaction. I could have just fucking moved. Instead, I Good. took the step. Yeah. Dumb. Once again, the electricity f uh, flares around Atticus's hands, but instead of arcing out to two different targets, it is extremely bright. You have to avert your eyes as this powerful bolt tears straight through the two of them with a casting of lightning bolt. Gang! Uh, Go fantastic. ahead and roll reflex saves. And I believe that uh, mirror image doesn't matter, right? Correct. It's just a line. It hits everything in there. All the everything mirror images in, in it. Doesn't destroy mirror images, but it's uh, yeah. I don't think, uh, but it's yeah. Basic reflex save. All right. First reflex save is a thirty. Second reflex save is a thirty-eight. Oh, really? Yeah. For fuck's sake! What a miserable game. What a miserable <laughs> fucking GM. <laughs> that was a really. That was a fucking out of this world. Out of this fucking world, spectacular roll for damage, too. You fucking asshole! So just give me half of it. <sighs> Alright, so the one that's saved takes 15 points of damage. Yeah. The other one takes none. That was 31 oh. points of damage oh, I rolled. No. Oh, no. That's, that's the best lightning bolt I've ever cast. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm gonna leave with my last action. <laughs> And I'm never playing. Right, I'm out. This is this is slowly walk away. As yeah, he's going to move down past Aldo and get out of uh, range of attack. Okay, uh, Suki, Suki the bear. You want some honey? Okay. You want some Su honey? Suki. Hey. 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 Honey. She goes over to the corner. Uh, it's literally like five feet of movement for my large creature and she gets there and it is an empty corner and roll there's no a, honey. We better roll a perception check. Take an action to roll a perception <laughs> check. You're looking for the he was very convincing. He said there was honey over there. And she's going to be really, really mad if there's not honey over here. Mad enough to tear someone to shreds. Uh, that's a 30. Damn it. You feel pretty confident mm. that there's no honey. Do I yeah. really? Yeah. So I am going to be really mad. Mm -hmm. And you see this big lumbering bear. It was like chill for a second. It like walked over, it's sniffing around. It's like, there's no honey over here. <laughs> and you hear a, <laughs> and as it turns around, because I'm a large creature, I do have 10 foot reach and I'm going to bite at the Denizen of Lang in the lower quadrant who is 10 feet from me once I turn yeah. around. They wow. can pay. So you go over there, you look for the honey, you don't see it, and with your <laughs> final action, you go to bite the Denizen of Lang. I'm so hungry. Oh, now there's honey in the corner. That's weird. Oh. <laughs> who put that there? It was DC 31. <laughs> That's so weird. Look who found the honey. I turned back around. I sniffed for the honey. Um, damn, it was almost a nat 20. Oh, I'm a honey bear. <laughs> honey badger don't. What is that? Honey badger don't care. <laughs> honey badger don't care. Uh, that's gonna be. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Uh, 24 to hit. That's a miss. Cool. All right, that's my turn. That was his goal, to make you waste a turn. And it succeeded. And now it is Eris's turn. Eris, you see Suki the bear go, mumbling something about honey under her bear breath. Then she turns to bite at the denizen of Lang and misses. What do you do? I uh, turn and look at that denizen that tried to mentally thwart my bear friend. Oh. I don't know how to turn and roll 20, but like, you know, theater of the mind. Um, and I use a skill action to do, 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 give it an intimidating glare and you're immediately demoralized against me. Really? I don't have to roll yep. anything? It's a free feat that I have called intimidating glare. Um, I demoralize with a mere glare. When I do, demoralize loses the auditory trait and gains the visual trait, and you don't take a penalty if the creature doesn't understand your language. I think you still you still have to roll though. You just yeah. don't have the penalty. Oh, I just like roll intimidate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a twenty-four. Okay, and what is the DC? It's my will DC. It's your will DC. Oh. That is a fail. Oh, yes. yes. No, no, I mean awesome. you fail. Uh, oh, oh, come on. Succeeds. They have very high You gotta be more specific. <laughs> yeah, that's a terrible way to... I was... Uh, Troy, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, the test results are positive. <laughs> That was a fail for you, not me, who well, just rolled. To do I like when you get blood work from the doctor and they they specify, like, positive is good. <laughs> well, you were doing the roll. It was against my will, DC. Yeah. That's why I said it was Troy a fail. was right. You all are wrong. <laughs> you did the roll. He said, it's a fail. I think they were also <laughs> reacting to his tone, which felt like... Yeah, which felt like he was disappointed. Yeah. yeah. It's a fail. I think he was disappointed because he's rooting for you. I'm rooting for you guys. Oh boy. Fuck no, you're not. Of Lang. No, you're I not. No, you're believe not. You. Sydney says and spits on her own bedroom floor. <laughs> I don't believe you at all. So you know what I'm going to do? Um, since this guy is in a corner by itself, I'm going to use Vomit Swarm, which is a 30 foot cone. There you and go. you need to make a basic reflex save. Oh, Look what you made her do. No. You're making me barf Nobody bugs puts... on your butt. <laughs> Nobody puts Denny in a <laughs> corner. Make barf bugs on your butt. Don't right. be vomited swarms. Aww. She did all right. that all the time. It was awesome. A middling reflex save. 35. Yeah, what? reflex yeah, is no. not the means by which to attack them. I just you wasted around doing that. Oh, so. cool. Well, this has been super fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Kate, is that is, is it a basic reflex save and was that a critical success? It said basic reflex save I don't think it was a critical success. My What's class DC is 26, say? and you said 35. Yeah, so that that would be a regular, so it's half yeah. damage. Yeah, yeah, just another regular success. It's a regular Nothing special. success. For half damage. You know what? Oh, you know, I never use D8s. I like don't know what they look like. Okay, that's a that's a one no. and an eight. Okay, that's a good balance. So, uh, nine. No, nine points of damage. By half. So four. Four. So far. We're all gonna get new dice for the show too. I'm oh, tired yeah? of everybody rolling single dice for it. <laughs> We've all do it too. It's I've like, got right, another D6. one of these probably, Give me 45 but... minutes. <laughs> one, two, three. We should all have dice. We're professionals. We'll provide you with dice. Um, I have dice. I have plenty of dice. I have it, I just Joe, gotta go get it. you just rolled three D4 and I saw you roll three single dice. Same also, die three times. Also, some of these times. dice, some now of these dice, watching. they're so nice, you're not supposed to roll them with other dice, you're supposed that's, to roll them alone. That's, that's the thing. true. The dice Kate, so nice, you rolled them twice, Kate am I right? broke her dice, so we have to get we should instead dice. have, is you should get us like more of these little trays, so we can have a tray for each of our dice. Well, yeah. I'll have you know that uh, glass cannon dice trays may be available by the time of the airing of this show. Oh. Because no. they just mm. arrived at McDermott's apartment. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. McDermott. <laughs> Ooh. Uno, dice. Oh, wait. And I will sell them to you at cost. Oh, oh. God, I hate myself well, right now. But uh, what did you do? What did you do? Roll mirror image. No. D4. No, no, no. This? No, this, this was a cone score. jump. Yeah. That's an air okay. effect thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. You're just you're just rolling that if you're if you're rolling a targeted, targeted thing. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Um, fun, fun times. It's Aldo's turn. Aldo, what are you thinking? Uh, Aldo is, yeah, I think he's just gonna 
do what he normally does, which is just throw stuff at people. So he is going to toss a blight bomb at the Jessica of Lang closest to him. Okay. I think he has an angle on it. Is that the one that, that critically saved against Atticus's lightning bolt? Or did no, he take that was damage? the one in the back. <sighs> so the which one is Jessica of Lang? That's the they one I hit are. before. They all are. They are all are. No, no, are. one of them they is Jessica of Lang, the other one is Langston Hughes, and the other one is Scott Lang. <laughs> Who's Stephen Scott Lang? Lang? Didn't Ant he murder Man, his yeah. wife? Ant his Man last is. name is Lang? Yes. Yeah. Don't act exasperated with me <laughs> that I didn't know Ant-Man's <laughs> real you last are name. A question. You are a good classic <laughs> Comic-Con geek. Stop. You are extremely good friends with an editor at Marvel. <laughs> That doesn't don't mean I know the. Because <laughs> I don't know Ant Man's real last name. You should take an interest in Nick's work. <laughs> I think you'd appreciate it. Nick is Nick doesn't work on Ant Man. Bad friend <laughs> behavior. Bad friend. Uh, that's a twenty-six to hit. Uh, twenty-six to hit misses. Okay. Their AC is twenty-seven. Must be. Yeah. I believe I think a thirty-seven so. was a crit. I need twenty-six is a miss. I know. So, he is going to take four points of poison splash damage. Roll a d4. No, it's a it's an area of effect thing. So. Oh, that's right. So it's a miss. It's so a miss, I so, just take yeah. that no matter what. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, and I'm going. I'm going to throw an alchemist's fire uh, with my second attack. Uh, that is a, that's plus 11, that is a 20, 27. 27 hits. All right, awesome. Uh, so now would be the d4. Okay, now we need a d4. One. Oh, all right. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. Uh, okay, eight plus four, so that's 12 points of fire damage, and he has two points of persistent damage fire damage on him that will tick on his turn. And with my last action, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to move a little bit. I'm going to move into the corner of the room. Okay. Sliding into the corner of the room as we end round two, we go into round three. It is Dennis of Ling choose number turn. Uh, he's the one that suggested Suki, go find some honey, and then Suki. This is Scott Lang. This is Scott, Scott Lang. Scott Lang. Scott Lang. <laughs> uh, all right, so Suki is still chilling there. Uh, he is going to slide up on Suki the bear, get right up in your business, and swing a kukri at you. Uh, and that is a natural one. Oh, on the kukri attack. You fool. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, this could be huge. Fumble, Ice fumble. cold. This could be huge. Ice and cold. fumble. Uh, fumble. Okay, fumble. this one fumble. from Tom in Madison, Wisconsin. Hi, Hello, Tom. Tom. Walk it off. I'd love to go to Madison, Wisconsin. Troy, let's go to Madison, Wisconsin. I love Madison, Wisconsin. I would love to go to Madison. Your attack misses due to terrible cramps in your lang legs, wings, <laughs> or whatever sort of extremities you use to move around. You take a minus two circumstance penalty penalty to your AC. Mm. <laughs> Why would you do this? Uh, unt- <laughs> oh my God. Well, flat footed. Uh, yeah, so you, you know, you just take a minus two penalty. Yeah, effectively, you are effectively flat footed until you move a total of 40 feet. So it's called okay. walk it off. Walk so it. this is a small room. Wrong? Probably not going to happen in this combat. Well, it's a, it's cumulative though, right? Right, it's cumulative. Yeah. So if you can remember, keep yeah. tacking it it's up, actually it'll pretty go away. Cool. I like that fumble. Yeah, it's um, interesting. Um, but yeah, it was 1d4 times 20 feet. I was like, why are you making me do math? But I just rolled it two, <laughs> and it was, so it's 40 feet of distance. All right, it has one attack left, and it will uh, try to stab you again. Uh, Suki, I imagine your AC is different now. All right, it's a decent little roll here. Uh, you tell me if a uh, 30 hits the bear's AC. Uh, let me just check. 
Oh, uh, no, it's it's not even that good, even when it's heightened, which it is. Um, but no, it's uh, that's a hit, yeah. Okay, not a crit, though. Uh, no, not a crit. And that was definitely mapped up, right, Troy? Yes. Thank you for checking my work. Um, it is going to be 15 points of regular slashing, um, and you're also going to take 1d6 persistent bleed at the end of your turn. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Yeah, this kukri slices. Uh, and dices. Uh, I'm just going to put the old bleedy bleeds in there. Okay, good round for that guy. Good round. Round of applause. It's Ethel's turn. Ethel, we need a big round out of you here. That mirror image has really slowed that combat down. It really has. Um, so I'm going to go for, I believe this is Jessica Lang, Northwest. Um, sure. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go uh, double slice, scimitar, warhammer. You didn't. No, but I rolled a natural seven and a natural two, so I oh. uh, that that might hit. Uh, the warhammer, the warhammer is a twenty-five, and yes. the scimitar, yeah. So they both miss. Oh, ah. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh. In, in <laughs> utter frustration, uh, Ethel is going to shove. Drop both weapons. You cut your own head off. <laughs> no, not that. He's not quite so frustrated, but he is frustrated enough that he's going to just shove. Uh, I believe it's Langston Hughes that's standing in front of him. Uh, try to th shove him through the uh, the door to the north. Okay. So this is going to be an athletics check. It has the attack penalty, so the MAP will apply uh, against your fortitude DC. Against my fort dick? Against your fort dick. <laughs> that's what I call him behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, that's going to be... I'm shoving with the Warhammer, by the way. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a 24 to shove. That is a fail. Okay. Nothing happens. Okay. Not a critical fail, so you don't fall and look foolish in front of your friends. In front of your friends. Oh! Come, 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 come. All right, so uh, another brutal round uh, for Ethel, and all of the mirror images are still there. It is the denizens of Lang's turn. Um, oh, I take I take uh, mental damage. Yes, you do. Um, one, is it 1d4 or just 4? Yeah, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Hard. Here we go. I can't pick up a D4 to save my life. Four points of mental damage. That's oh. max if you're following along at home. Um, there's, no, there's no flat check to get out of that, is there? Uh, yes, yeah, persistent damage. Like it. Uh, wait, actually, I think the persistent damage for a phantom pain, uh, if the target recovers from being sickened, the persistent damage ends and the spell ends. But I wonder, there's no reason to think you don't still roll the flat check. I think this is just another way that it ends. If someone can remove sick and it ends, but I think you still would get the flat check because it doesn't say the only way you can recover, you can remove the persistent damage. Doesn't okay. matter, I rolled a natural two. Okay. That's how I read it, so. We'll see cannon fodder next week. Um, all right, boop, 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 scoot, doo, 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 doo. I am going to, uh, Oh, you and your fucking attacks of opportunity are incredibly lame. I This one's going to take a step away from you and then is going to move around you to flank. Uh, and then it's going to take one swing with the Kukri at your flat-footed uh, AC. Uh, uh, middling, a 28 to hit. Yes, that hits. Okay. Here we go, then. Middling. Uh, that is going to be nine points of slashing plus persistent bleed. So now you're gonna have persistent mental and persistent bleed. Let's put the heart and the bloody eye on you. That's two different kinds of persistent damage. And then the one to the north will uh, also, hmm, is also going to strike out at you with the kukri. I need a crit. Uh, hold on a second. Uh are you having two of them go before I go? Uh, yeah, is that okay? I felt like it was <laughs> only because they rolled a higher initiative than you. I felt like it was creature <laughs> Ethel, creature me. I don't remember well, you that. Felt too wrong. <laughs> too much sixty nine and. <laughs> I think you got the initiative your brain. Wrong. I really do. Uh, it goes uh, Denizen of Lang number two, Ethel, D O L one, D O L three, then Atticus Suki, Eris Alder. Wow. So Jessica of Lang. 
Langston Hughes, then Scotland. I think no. this is what's confusing you, is all these names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Kukri. If you would watch an Ant-Man movie, maybe things would fall into place a little more. This battle would be different. It missed with the Kukri. Um, nice. So it will try another kook, because I really want to hit you. Actually, you know what? Um, instead of the Kukri, just to mix things up, it's going to try and bite you. And it's going to miss, I, I think, 22 against your flat-footed. Miss. Okay. Forgot about the bite. The bite's fun. Okay, no now. Biting. No biting. <laughs> Atticus, if you'd like to go, it's your turn officially now. Oh, Atticus will kind of reach around to the, uh, the, the, the grab a part of his coat uh, and with a flourish, because he just can't help his uh, showmanship, mm-hmm. he's going to pull it around himself and vanish with an invisibility cloak. And then he is going to slip unseen into the room. Ooh. Uh, and he's going to move all the way to here, uh, which is on the other side of the room. So he's going to slip through Ethel's square between two enemies uh, and get to the wall on the far side. Now, he's invisible. You do whatever you want with that in terms of, so he, I didn't move half speed and I didn't roll stealth checks. Uh, okay. I figured in the in the wildness of the melee, they might not notice that happen. Okay. Um, great. Suki. Suki the Suki, bear. Uh, <laughs> Suki hears Ethel go, no bite. And Suki in her bear brain goes, bite. And she's going <laughs> to try to bite twice at this uh, denizen that she is now locked in combat with. Uh, yeah, that's going to be uh, 31 to hit. Yeah, that'll do. Noise. And that's going to be... What's my damage die with for this bear bite? My jaws, 2d8. Nice. It has it has a plus, doesn't it? Seventeen, yeah, plus nine. Oh Jesus! All right, so seventeen damage on the first attack, and then second attack. Here we go. Uh, he, I believe that will. Yeah, that's a thirty. Another hit with Suki a minus the five. Bear. Oh no! Sorry, I'm looking at my bear stats, and it doesn't have my stuff on it. Um, twenty-five. Twenty-five is a miss. Okay. Those stats were a little too bare. Um, I'm gonna take a third attack. Why not? It's it's highly suggested because it's foolish. That's why not. But I can't do (laughs) it. It's frowned upon. I'm doing it. Wait, what's my what's the minus of the third tradition? Elementary minus ten. Minus ten. Well, I'm not gonna hit, but let's try. Maybe you'll nat twenty. I shit you not. Uh, Give her the scimitar, Suki. Yeah. Get I, throw, to her. I throw the bear the scimitar just in time. <laughs> like Catch Sif. it in her mouth. <laughs> like Sif and Dark Souls. <laughs> yes, like Sif and Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, it rolled onto it as you were like, nah, tw- like 20. Wow. Um, <laughs> so that's going to be a 36. Yeah, no. I mean, you nat 20. Minus 10. This is big here. This is important. This is the difference. Yeah. It's a miss. 26. So it's just Wait, a hit. Does that, but a natural 20 is always a hit. Correct. So it's, it's just a, a hit. It is not a call. crit. I don't roll. Cause, oh, because okay. wait. I mean, <laughs> is, is it plus? No, doesn't a natural twenty raise the success of it? I can't. You know, yes, so, but which I would think make a natural video. twenty in her case is a miss. Well, right? let's see. What, what is, is your is bonus? It? What's your bonus to the hit? Bonus is a plus sixteen, so it would be a thirty-six. No, it would be plus. So it'd be plus six on Sorry, this attack. Yes, so it's a six. twenty-six, which is a miss. So it's elevated to a hit. To a hit. Yeah. Oh, what a bummer. Yeah. That's why you don't do the third attack. <laughs> though, though, to be but fair, to be fair, against most other creatures, that still would be a crit. Yeah, these that's These are just true. really high AC. These are really tough. That's true. And I still, I'm doing some damage, you know? It's yeah, not a crit, hit. but some. Yeah. Does this guy uh, have any mirror images? He oh, does. does he? Yeah, he's got four. Oh, yeah, you didn't roll the first. Fucking <laughs> 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 dumb game. Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright, so, uh, do you want uh, to roll? so let's go back to your initial 17 points of damage. God damn it. And roll a fucking D4 and then throw okay. that D4 through your ceiling. And just ceiling. say one, no matter what you roll. Right, no matter yeah, what you roll, lie. just say It's a three. Alright, so you're, you're clearly not understanding Wrong. the assignment, but go on. <laughs> no, you're, doing, you're playing the right way. Alright, now roll a, a D3, which is a D6 divided by two. 
A six. All right, so two images have disappeared. Um, and that's good. <sighs> that's chomp, good. Chomp, that is great. Chomp, 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 chomp. She's chomping away. Chomping images away. Chomp, chomp, chewy, chomp. Uh, and now it is Eris's turn. Damn it. Yeah. Um, you knew it was coming. You knew yeah. it was coming, Eris. Well, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, hindsight. Blah, blah, blah. I wish I casted countless eyes on Ethel before. I'm so sorry, took Suki. Bleed damage. Speaking of what? bleed, oh, Suki. Yeah. Take six points of bleed damage. Oh, my and God. Then, uh, I rolled a, D- a six on a D6. And then oh. can you give me a flat check to see if you stop the bleed? She yes. has bleed. We forgot to do her bleed. <sighs> Seven. Seven, okay. So you're still bleeding. Oh. Still bleeding. You know what? I'm not explaining anything I'm doing anymore because I don't want any words to trigger any reminders about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's great yeah. about this game is how good it is for a podcast. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. With all that regret, I am going to reach out to Ethel and be like, I'm so sorry I didn't do this sooner and cast countless eyes on you. So you're at least not like the flanked bonus or D bonus is um, gone now. Um, uh, thanks, he says as <laughs> countless eyes appear on his body. <laughs> so cre- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe you're used to it now, and maybe you're like, oh yeah, I'm a little comfy with so many eyes on me. <laughs> Don't tell me how to feel about the eyes on my body. And then it's your goth, kill it! And then I'm also gonna cast um, my Needle of Vengeance focus spell slash hex. Um, uh, with one action that I have left, and um, the Needle of Vengeance will be on Ethel. So if anyone attacks Ethel, it'll need a needle in there. All right, so Ethel has a million eyes on him and a needle of protection at his back. And it is Aldo's turn. Okay. Although, so I, I, I don't know if we did this already, but I, I want to get a, if I could do a knowledge check. I just want to find out if they have any weaknesses to any particular kinds of damage. Um, yeah, you, you've, you've fought them enough that I can just tell you without spending the action. They're immune to cold. Mm-hmm. They're resistant to critical hits and precision damage. Okay. Resistant to critical hits even. Wow. This is oh one God. thing that wait, wait. I have, I've really been enjoying Pathfinder 2nd Edition, but this is one thing that really has bummed me out. The entire time I've been playing, as far as I know, we've never run into anyone who has been vulnerable to any one kind of type of damage. And this is one thing, in an area in which I would shine, being able to do all kinds of different types of damage. I was promised that this would be a thing, and so far, it has not happened one time. <laughs> well, that's not true. You single-handedly completely changed the Wraith combat because it was weak to light, and you were able to make that bottled sunlight, and that made it inept, the whole combat. That was huge. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's a little different than what I'm talking about, though. It's just like that. About fire with damage. my persistent damage, it like ticks on every turn, and getting that bonus damage like every time. This is yeah. something we haven't run into, so. Yeah, anyway. I, I've seen very few monsters, you're right, that are like, they're weak to fire. Yeah, they're weak and I to thought acid, weak to when electricity. people were selling the Alchemist class to me, that was one of the selling points, was that this is something I could be able to take advantage of, and it's never happened, so. Who are these carnival barkers? <laughs> these carnivals who are talking I have to so, stop talking to people. Hang on, are you telling me? Alchemist class, only five dollars. <laughs> All those Alchemist apologizers. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, just to back up for a second. Are you telling me that this whole time after you sold this scimitar to us real hard, that I can't decapitate any one of these guys? They're resistant critical hits, that just means they take X amount less damage. They're resistant. Yeah, you still cut off their head. It it just, they're they're alive a little bit longer. Yeah. Did you just cut off my fucking head? Do you guys guys hear the story? It's probably apocryphal that when they chopped Marie Antoinette's head off in the guillotine, it, it landed face up and she said, did it happen yet? Come no, I, stop you, saying shit like that before I'm going to sleep, man. I know that's creeping me out. Dude, you can't talk. Yet? Yeah, you can't talk. It's a, it's totally powerful. You can't talk. You don't have any lungs. I From saw. Out, if you could read lips, maybe you could see it. Yeah, maybe she I went. S- did it happen yet in French? I um, saw a viper with its head cut off, and the head. This was on TikTok or something, and the head was laying next to the decapitated body, and the head opened its mouth up 
and bit the body and the body started writhing. Like it was still like going through the motion of being a <laughs> Thank you for the additional nightmare. <laughs> just went, ah, I bit the body. The body was like, fuck, who did that? Oh, just your decapitated head. Oh my God. How did, how did its head uh, get separated from its body? I assume someone chopped it off. It was a horrible sound. And then went like this. It was a watch, on TikTok. Watch what these dumb snakes do. <laughs> That's what they did. Man, don't be using snakes like that for your TikToks. Yeah, seriously. Not right. Leave the snakes alone. I see a lot of animal murder. Just leave what is your TikTok? What are you using? Why the algorithm has chosen disturbing. me? Because I immediately go, ah! That one I watched, though, because I was like, what's going on here? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> What's going on here? Well, it comes to his head's over there, God! I don't care for that. All right, I'm going to throw, I'm going to attempt to throw another blight bomb at the citizen <sighs> Jessica of Lang, uh, <laughs> closest to me. Actually, yeah, I guess that's my only shot here. Natural one. Oh, oh boy. Oh, God. Oh, God. For yeah. the good of the show, we just skip this one. <laughs> just pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> Let's just play Blades in the Dark. I know. Yeah, please. Where's the D6s? Let me roll. <laughs> uh, all right. This one from Ben in Chilliwack, Canada. Sure. Yep. Chilliwack. 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 From Ben. That's... A sense of impending doom. Oh, God. You feel a sudden sense of impending doom. Worse yet, everyone else can sense it on you, too. If this is drawn by a PC, you are doomed one until your oh. next rest. NPCs may notice the bad luck you give off and comment on it or avoid you entirely. Uh, and then there's another thing if it's pulled by the GM, but this was pulled by a player. A sense of impending doom. So you're doomed one, a condition that carries over from Dreamland to the Material Plane. <laughs> Great. Uh, until your next rest. Until your next rest. Uh, oh, God. So We're going to rest one. in this room. <laughs> yeah. In the Dreamlands. Okay. Uh, all right. So that did not make me feel good. I now am going to throw a an Alchemist Fire at the same person. Okay. All right. That is a 28 to hit. That's a hit. And how many images are there? Uh, there are two. No, it's all four because you keep hitting it, right? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, can you guys see what it says? Because I've had my yeah, virtual tabletop yeah. went down 45 minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> and it won't reload. How, uh, many, how many images, guys? Is uh, it's a little think, fist. Yeah, that's four. Okay. Okay, so I rolled a three. So one image is gone. He takes okay. four points of fire splash damage. Okay. And I'm going to throw a lesser uh, fire, alchemist fire, with my final attack, and just in the hopes of getting rid of another image. Uh, that is a natural 19. That is a 25 to hit. That's a miss. My God. Uh, so, but they take another two, one point of uh, splash damage. One point of splash. I'm making notes because I can't use the VTT. That is the end of round three. As we go into round four, there were three of these denizens of Lang, and Mirror Image completely changed the combat. Suki is 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 laid out some bites. Uh, Eris is doing some crazy magic. Ethel cannot hit the broadside of a barn. Neither can I. Neither can I. Uh, and I've got a plan. Yeah, Joe, as usual, has a plan. Um, this takes four rounds to execute. And, it does. Uh, it Aldo, does. Uh, is hitting on the first one and then missing on the other two. What is going on in this place? We will not find out because we're never playing again. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we will okay. find out. We'll find we out next week because of our plan. Tours yeah. canceled. I guess I'll never see you all again. This was fun. Yeah, huh? so much for the studio. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not signing the lease that I signed three weeks ago. Come on, I'm the one that's doomed. You guys should show up. All right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.